Let's talk about the integrated rate laws. First of all, let's talk about the first order integrated rate law. You already know that if a reaction that proceeds by first order rate kinetics means that it the rate of the reaction is proportional to the concentration of one reactant. The generic case we'll call the one reactant A. So in this case, um, the generic reaction could be A proceeds to B. And the rate of the reaction is dependent only on the concentration of A to the first order. Write that rate law expression as the opposite of the change in the concentration of A with the change in time equals k, some constant, called the rate constant, times the concentration of A, that concentration of your reactant on which the rate is dependent. Okay, so this rate, this derivative, um, is the rate law, and it, it, it describes how the rate of the reaction changes with the concentration of A. But a more useful form of this particular equation is the integrated rate law. And the integrated rate law, you just integrate this um, derivative. And so, of course, to integrate, you need to pull all of the like variables to the same side. So we'll have negative dA, molar concentration of A, divided by A equals K times dT. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by the negative 1 to have all the constants on one side and we'll end up with dA divided by A equals negative K dT. Now we're ready to integrate both sides of the equation and of course the integral of dT is just T so that's going to equal negative K T um, at minus 0 which is just T and then this one is the um, integral of 1 over x is the natural log of x. Um, so over time from 0 to time t, that's going to be the natural log of a at time t plus some constant minus the natural log of a at time 0 plus some constant. The constant will cancel out and we're left with the natural log of a at some time t minus the natural log of a at time 0 equals negative kt. So this is one form of the integrated rate law. Um, this is useful because um, given the initial concentration and the time that has elapsed, and if you know the rate constant, you can determine um, the concentration at any time t, or if you know the initial uh, concentration, the concentration at some time t, you can calculate k, or you can um, rearrange the equation in that way. It makes it a little bit easier by taking um, the inverse log of both sides of the equation and um, and uh, um, multiplying by uh, the the concentration at time zero to get that form of the equation or if you uh, want to plot this in the y equals mx plus b form you can see that this is the y-intercept and this negative k is your slope and so this is a way of determining k as well from the slope of the line so when you plot the integrated rate um, law in this way for the first order rate law, you end up with um, a plot of um, a straight line um, with the natural log of the concentration versus time, and then the slope of the line is negative k. Here's an example of using that integrated rate equation for a first order. So in this particular case, the first order decomposition of nitrous oxide to give nitrogen and oxygen um, has continued for 100 milliseconds. If the initial concentration is 0.2 and k equals 3.4, what is the calculation concentration of the remaining um, nitrous uh, dioxide? So you can use the form of the equation A. We're, cu we're curious about the concentration at some time t equals A naught times e to the negative kt. Um, A at time t is what we're looking for, the nitrous oxide at time t. The initial concentration is 0.2 molar. Um, the k is 3.4 seconds, and the time that has elapsed is 100 milliseconds. So we can just simply plug all these numbers into this equation that we've already prepared, where A in this case 
equals the nitrous oxide. Um, and so we'll plug in 0.2 for the initial concentration, e to the negative k, k is 3.4 inverse seconds times the time that it has elapsed, which is 100 milliseconds. So you have to multiply that by well, 10 to the negative 3 so that we can get the unit the same as the rate constant, which is in seconds. Seconds. And just plug that into your calculator, and you get the concentration at time t, which in this case is the concentration of the nitrous oxide at 100 milliseconds. Time elapsed equals... Um, 0.18 molar. Now after you do a calculation like this you want to ask yourself does that number make sense? And if you start with 0.2 molar and only a very fraction of, of the time passes um, and you end up with 0.18 molar that seems like a legitimate answer for this particular question. So that's an example of using the integrated rate law.